Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is a bit of a celebration because on February 14th, 2012, Les and I uploaded our intro videos to kick off the existence of Get Bookish. So that means this year, on February 14th, 2022, it marks 10 years of us talking about books on the internet. It's kind of a big deal and it's a little hard for my brain to really wrap around the idea that we've been doing this for 10 whole years. My life has changed so much and also not at all in some ways. Like this thing has been a constant despite the fact that when Les and I started this channel, we were both still an undergrad. We've since graduated. We've moved many times. We've each held many different jobs. Les went back and got a master's degree. I'm now a permanent resident in Canada and now getting my citizenship. Things have definitely changed since 2012, but at the same time, here we are still uploading videos, talking about books, and interacting with all of you. So in celebration of that, I wanted to do a fun video that I've seen around where it's like booktube made me read it, and it's people talking about books that they picked up because fellow booktubers had influenced them to actually read them. Some of these are books that were on my radar, but just because I was listening to other people talk about how great they are, I figured I should pick them up. And because this is also a celebration of 10 years on YouTube, I am picking one book for each year. So we're gonna take a little trip down memory lane here and talk about a book from 2012 to 2021. So if you're ready to join me for that, stick around. As I mentioned, we started our channel in February, and within a couple months of that, I picked up this first book, which is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. This book was everywhere in 2012. It was already on my radar. I looked at my Goodreads and I had added it before we started our channel, but just hearing everybody talk about that book and rave about it at that time, that was the push that I needed to actually pick it up. In that year when I read it, I really liked it. I watched my review. I felt very uncomfortable watching myself so long ago, but I gave it a four and a half out of five. I really enjoyed this book. I mean, it's YA contemporary. It's definitely not something that I would pick up now. I highly doubt I would give it a four and a half out of five if I were to read it again. But at that time, I really enjoyed it. I saw the hype that this book was getting and I understood it. And although I don't think I'll ever read it again, it was the right book at the right time for sure. In 2013, I read The Maze Runner by James Dashner, another book that many of you who were around during that time will be familiar with, and many of you who maybe weren't even watching booktube at that time will be familiar with because it was made into a film and so got a little bit of resurgence from that. This is another example of a young adult book where if I read it now, I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much, but it was, it was good for the time. And I do think that the concept of it, the sort of dystopian aspect of it and all these kids being together and trying to escape this maze and sort of what's gonna happen, that is still intriguing. And I think it will still pull people in even, even nowadays. But yes, another solid selection for booktube making me read it. Getting into 2014, you can start to see how things are shifting a bit. I'm moving away from young adult books when I was going through my Goodreads to see what I had read each year and what was actually related to stuff I know was being talked about on booktube at the time. I was definitely seeing starting in 2014, there were not really young adult books anymore to choose from. It was definitely getting more into adult. This is reflected in the fact that I read Ready Player One by Ernest Klein in early 2014. And I had a ton of fun with this book. I was a bit worried about it because it is so heavily focused on older video games and that's not something I'm very familiar with, but the entire plot of it was so fun. I gave it five stars at the time. This is one where I think if I reread it, I would still enjoy it. Maybe not quite as much. Maybe it wouldn't be a five star read. If someone said, you need to read this book again, I could do it and it, it wouldn't bother me at all. In 2015, everyone was talking about Burial Rites by Hannah Kent and just how beautiful and haunting it was. This is um, an adult historical fiction book. It takes place in Iceland and this woman is going to be killed for a crime she committed and I believe she was the, the last woman to be killed in, in a capital punishment sense in Iceland and so there's just this creeping hauntingness to it. It's sad because you 
know how things are going to end. And I think that really captured a lot of people's minds reading this book. So of course I had to pick it up too. Even though the subject of this book is very heavy, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars at the time. You'll notice with this that a lot of the books that I'm talking about here are books that I had a positive experience with because, you know, this video is trying to be celebratory. So didn't want to bring it down too much. But yeah, Burial Rights, another good one for making me read it. In 2016, I read When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This was one that I don't think I ever would have picked up had other people not been talking about it because I just wasn't sure what to make of that title. And at the time I gave it four stars, but this is one of those books that even though I didn't give it five, I think just because the writing was a little too much for me, a little overdone at times, the subject of it, the fact that this doctor who's been training all these years to be a physician as he's wrapping that up, he finds out that he also now is sick and he's reflecting on those things and the, it's so moving and the end made me cry. But just because I didn't give it five stars doesn't mean this book hasn't stuck with me. It's one of those books where at the time I didn't give it five stars, but I feel like its impact has been more of a five star impact. So I had to mention it here because this is, this is one yet. Yeah, that title, I would have been so confused about what exactly it means, but hearing everybody else talk about it on booktube pushed me to pick it up, and I'm really, really glad that I did. In 2017, I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is definitely out of the norm for me at that time, picking up a young adult book again, but I only picked it up because the hype was so much that I decided that it was going to be worth my time. Even though it was young adult, I was hearing about sort of the tough topics that it was was tackling and how much everybody was loving it anyway and so I took that little leap to go back to some young adult stuff and once again very glad I did. I gave this book five stars. I'm really happy that I did take the time to read this, that I listened to what everybody was saying. It's like even though this is a young adult book it packs a punch. It covers some really difficult topics in such a great way especially for younger audiences. It's absolutely a book that I would still recommend now if people were asking what sort of young adult books that deal with tougher topics, you know, should they give to the kids in their lives. So this one is one of those ones that's going to stand the test of time and I'm really glad that I picked it up when I did. In 2018, I read a book that's sort of the downer of this list. It, I still gave it three stars, to be fair, but I had really high expectations for it and that's Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is absolutely one that I had heard of a while ago. I'm sure I'd heard of it in 2012, but it definitely wasn't at the top of my list. But every time somebody was talking about this book, they were raving about it, how great it was, how creepy it was, how they've read it many times. And so that that made me more interested to pick it up. And also the fact that my name is Rebecca. So I thought if I love this book, that'd be amazing because it's got my name on it. And it's such a, a creepy book, or at least it sounds like it's going to be so creepy. Unfortunately, this was not living up to the booktube hype for me. Like I said, I gave it three stars. It's an adult classic, but it just did not hit the spots for me. There was no way it could ever really live up to the hype that had been built up to that point. So unfortunately, this one, I was made to read it and it just didn't work out. The book that I went with in 2019 is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you have a keen eye, you may notice that this is actually an ARC. So I got an email in my inbox one day saying, if you're interested in getting an ARC of Taylor Jenkins Reid's next book, then sign up here. And I was lucky enough to get on that list and get this book. But the thing is, I hadn't read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo at this point. I had just heard everybody talking about how great that book was. So when I saw the author's next book was going to potentially be available to me, I said, you know what, I'm going to go for it because everyone's been raving about her other book. This one sounds really cool. It's historical fiction again, but it's historical fiction set in a more modern time. And so I got this sent to me. And I read this book and had the best time with it. I did give it four stars, like it wasn't perfect, but this is once again a book that has stuck with me 
to today. And it's also influenced some of the music that I listen to just because the arrow in this book is taking place. It's sort of influenced by Fleetwood Mac and the dynamics of that band, but also I kind of got some Janis Joplin vibes from Daisy Jones. And so I was listening to a lot of that music from that era thanks to this book. And it's really kind of changed some of the stuff that I listen to even today. So this influenced me outside of booktube and actually influenced sort of the music that I'm still listening to now, which is pretty crazy. I enjoyed this and I'm definitely looking forward to the TV show. I really hope they can do this justice. For 2020, I went with Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wobgeshig Rice. It follows a uh, group of indigenous people living in Northern Canada and a community up there and they're sort of cut off from everything. They don't know what's happening and they, you know, they can sort of slowly figure things out, but it's about them having to survive up there alone. Uh, and it was just so creepy. It just had that like little bit of uncomfortableness. You know, things are happening. No one quite knows what's going on. They're trying to survive through the winter. You know, outsiders start coming in because this community is able to sustain itself. So what are those outsiders going to do that might disrupt everything? It was really interesting and kind of dark to read. And I really wanted to share this one because I don't think I would have been aware of it if I wasn't seeing other booktubers talk about Canadian literature and specifically books by Indigenous authors. That's definitely been something that has come more to the forefront on booktube in the last few years and I'm really grateful for that because something like this wouldn't necessarily be on a big bestseller list. Maybe if you were specifically looking at lists within ca Canadian media, but outside of that, this, this book you wouldn't be seeing it everywhere and so I'm really happy that booktube helped me find stuff like this and has really uh, grown so much more in recent years to share all of these different stories. It's, the scope has become so much wider in terms of the books that I'm aware of thanks to everything that everyone else is talking about. And finally for 2021, the last book so far that booktube has made me read is the Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. I'd seen people talking about this book here and there for a couple years and the title always intrigued me because I wanted to know what on earth that actually meant. And then when I finally grabbed the book, because people kept talking about it and talking about how great it was, I realized sort of this plot of how this disease comes through and, and kills many women, and then childbirth becomes deadly for both the baby and the mother, and it follows a woman who survived this plague, but now she's living in a world full of men and it's very dangerous and she has to pretend to be a man to survive. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. It's very dark. Like you have to be in an okay mindset to read this book, but it had me hooked. I did not want to put this book down. The only reason it didn't get five stars was because this is clearly like a debut book and it and there were some things that felt a little awkward with the writing, but man, I, I would reread this book again right now. I really would. That's how great it was. I'm so glad that I listened to everybody talking about this book and how great it was because I had a fantastic time with it. I have the second book in this series. They're sort of interconnected and so I'm really looking forward to reading that one and continuing on in this world because it's just so fascinating. I think she executed her idea very, very well. Those are the 10 books that I've read in the last 10 years, thanks to booktube. If you were also influenced to read these books, please let me know how that went for you down below. Also, if you have other books that you wanna mention that booktube has influenced you to read, I'd be very curious to see which ones you actually picked up because everybody just would not stop gushing about them. I also just wanna say a very heartfelt thank you to all of you who are watching this video who've followed us throughout the years, who, who comment and just generally interact with us on this platform. When you do something as a hobby for 10 years like this, it's a bit of a roller coaster. There are times when you have so much energy and inspiration to make videos, and there are other times where you don't wanna make anything at all. You just wanna watch what everybody else is doing. It's been great to be on this journey for the past 10 years and be able to talk about something we love. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you later.